Well, guess what? It's love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our Prince of Peace. So uh, come on over and uh, walk the wild side with the gospel writer of the everlasting uh, gospel of Revelation 14. And uh, it's a time of uh, rejoicing. And it's a time to be uh, lifted up by Christ's uh, love that he poured out for all of us. And uh, so it's a time that we need to reflect, especially on Good Friday, which this is. I'm so honored to have been chosen uh, by the Lord for this. And uh, blessed am I above all men to be able to present the passion of the Christ. So uh, come on back at the end now. Uh, the cliffhanger here is going to be wow. So I'm going to turn her around here, show you some nice pretty pictures, and uh, enjoy this abundantly, beloved. Because it's something that, uh, even though it can't really be enjoyed, it's something that will lift us up much higher into uh, the presence of, of our love. If, if only we will uh, allow that to, uh, to, to happen. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, I just love these pretty pictures. So uh, get ready, and here we go. And uh, this is a very special reading, and uh, I know it will uh, abundantly bless you. So get ready to uh, rock and roll. So uh, it was said about that uh, uh, earthquake was all set to shake, rattle, and roll while tearing a lot of things apart at the moment of Christ's uh, nearing last breath, and once again on Easter morning. For the time being, though, as Jesus looked down upon his mother and John with the rest, he smiled with them but said nothing. In the meantime, the four soldiers uh, uh, assigned to the master's crucifixion had divided his clothes among them, one taking his sandals, one the girdle, and the fourth his cloak. Uh, and that only left his tunic, uh, a seamless vestment, uh, reaching down to the knees. And they were going to cut it up in four pieces. But when those soldiers saw how unusual the garment was, they cast lots for it. Now, it came about that when Jesus looked down upon them while dividing his garments, knowing that this was foretold, uh, it was quite the moment. Behold, the wood of the cross was suddenly the throne of majesty and the chair of the doctrine of life, and Emmanuel was then raised high upon it in the spirit, confirming his doctrine of love by his own brave example. And then Christ internalized, uh, internalized feelings of charity and perfection by asking our Father of lights to overlook the ignorance of all those so spitefully uh, unto him. And it was amazing. And um, it was quite the uh, time. For ignorance is, was, and always shall be responsible for a whole lot of nothingness, since stupidity always rejoices when knowledge has been ignored. And the above was a principle of fraternal love that our divine teacher had proclaimed by his own lips, and he now confirmed and executed upon it. Uh, executed it upon the cross, not only by pardoning and loving his enemies, but by also accusing those under the plea of ignorance, whose malice had already reached the highest point possible to men in blaspheming and crucifying their very own true Lord, uh, uh, the, our everlasting Redeemer. Such was the difference in the behavior uh, of ungrateful men once favored with enlightenment, instruction, and blessing. But from the behavior of Jesus, it would make him numb uh, in his most burning charity while suffering the crown of thorns, the nails, and the cross, and unhe the unheard blasphemy at the hands of hard-hearted men. Oh, incomprehensible love, oh, inexpressible sweetness, oh, patience, inconceivable unto man and admirable unto the angels and the most and most fearful to devils. Then one of the thieves all of a sudden became aware of some of the mysteries thereabouts. And as the centurion uh, began uh, their final preparations, uh, even before uh, he was lifted up, 
one of those crooks sentenced to die, then abruptly repented over Christ uh, being talked to as if uh, he had deserved his lot. Uh, but in the meanwhile, after those thieves were gladly given a little myrrh to dull their incoming pain, no more time was wasted. Therefore the guards stripped off their ragged clothing, tied some ropes around their arms, and with the help of some small ladders, they dragged those ban bandits over to their places on their cross. Uh, then their arms were bound tightly by some cords that their, circu their circulation was even being cut off. In the same way, the wrists, knees, and feet of those criminals were bound so tight that their joints were even cracked, which forced blood to also burst out. Now, at about half uh, past 10 o'clock that Friday morning, Good Friday, uh, wasn't too good for him. But Jesus, uh, that was when Jesus was first hung upon the cross. And within a short time, because of many passing travelers, upwards over a thousand sets of staring eyes had glanced over towards our deflated bread of heaven to witness the most morbid spectacle of that Son of Man's de decimating crucifixion. And all throughout those dreadful hours, the unseen host stood in silence while gazing down upon the extraordinary phenomenon of their uh, creator as he was in the midst of dying his own, uh, dying a death of his own creature, uh, and even the ignoble death of a condemned criminal whom passerbys even spit at. And uh, many passed and wagged their tongue and railed at him, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it again in three days, save yourself. If you're really the Son of God, why do you not come down from your cross and prove your word? In a like manner, rulers and the Jews mocked him, saying, He saved others, but himself he cannot save. Others said, If you are the king of the Jews, leave that tree and you will impress us. Later on, they mocked him some more, saying he trusted in God to deliver him. He even now claimed to be the Son of God. So look at him uh, being uh, uh, crucified between uh, two thieves, like but a killer. And uh, so the crowds had greatly d diminished by this point. And in so much as that was true, Jesus would make no reply to their taunts. And since it was nearing noontime of this special uh, preparation day, uh, by half past 11 o'clock, most of the jesting and jeering crowd had gone its way. Less than 200 people remained on the scene, mostly the Lord's brethren and uh, of lingering tears. Uh, but there were probably 35% uh, hecklers and evil dark, uh, unloving people on that scene. And even though the climbing darkness all around them was pretty nerve-wracking, to say the least, the soldiers tried not to let that bother them too much as they prepared to uh, eat lunch and to, uh, and to drink their, uh, their uh, cheap sour wine, for they needed to settle down for the long dead watch ahead as they partook of their wine uh, they sar sarcastically offered a toast unto Jesus, saying, Hail and good fortune to the king of the Jews as they clicked their glasses together. And they were a bit astonished at the master's toler tolerance regarding their rid ridicule and their mocking. But uh, he was thirsty and dehydrated. And looking down, he said, I, I thirst. And when the captain of the guard heard Jesus say this, he took some wine from his bottle and putting up uh, the saturated sponge upon the end of a javelin, he raised it high unto him so he could moisten his parched lips. But unto that was added vinegar's bitterness. So the Lord only turned his head and uh, he would drink not. And uh, a moment later, one of the thieves sneered at that author of faith again saying, if you, are the, of the, if you are the Son of God, why don't you save yourself and us? But when uh, Augustus uh, belittled uh, Jesus, the other thief, Augustus was one of the thieves, the other one said, do you have no fear even of God? Don't you even see that we're suffering unjustly for our deeds, but this man now suffers unjustly at the hands of the pious? Uh, so it's better that we should now seek forgiveness from our sins and salvation for our souls. Now when that star of stars heard that thief say this, he turned his face towards Demas and smiled, and with uh, approval, with some approval, his heart was touched. Christ's heart was touched. Um, so, beloved, the repented thief 
repented for one said um, and uh, when he saw the faith of Jesus turn towards him he, he mustered up courage and, and fan he fanned the flickering faith uh, flame of his faith and he said aloud Lord remember me when you come to your kingdom and Jesus said verily verily this day shall you be with me in paradise.